this is Exodus bringing you a Guild Wars 2 video of The Thief. The Thief is a stealth based class that is normally played as a burst assassin, but can play the role as a support or off tank if built to do so, potentially even being able to be non-reliant on stealth. But being primarily a stealth based class, the Thief's primary strength in PvP is being able to quickly and quietly neutralize enemy priority targets especially those with lower effective health pools. At the same time, it also means that the Thief is one of the hardest classes in the game to catch if they are a step ahead of you. However, the big drawback to the Thief is that they are extremely squishy, although having a skill and the right traits may fix the issue. For my build, I go with 10, 30, 30, 0, 0, emphasizing on Shadow Arts for survivability and durability while emphasizing damage on Critical Strikes and Deadly Arts. The traits in Critical Strike that I use are 7% increased critical chance behind or beside targets, 5% precision going into vitality, although something else can be used if preferred, and then 20% more damage against those below 50% health. In Shadow Arts, I give regeneration to allies whom I stealth. There's something to keep in mind is that this does work on yourself. Stealing granting me 2 seconds of stealth, which is increased to 3 by the trait. And regenerating health as long as I am in stealth. The only trait in Deadly Arts that I grab is stealing dealing damage, making it essentially deal direct damage as well as applying a 10 second poison. For primary weapons, I wield dual daggers for fast and powerful single target damage and burst. For the offhand weapon, I wield a short bow for safe range damage and escapability. Although it doesn't really matter what sigils you decide to use on your weapons, having the sigil of energy for your short bow allowing you to gain endurance when you switch to it makes it an amazing escape tool. For armor enchants, or runes, I use the runes of the eagle, giving me great amounts of precision and critical damage, as well as even more damage against those below 50% health. For an amulet, I use the standard Berserker's Jewel. Keep in mind that this build is just what I use, and this is not set in stone as the quote unquote right way. For utility slots, I use Hide in the Shadows for healing, condition removing, and a stealth. I also use Blinding Powder for an emergency insta-stealth, Shadow Refuge for a long AoE stealth as well as the Dark Combo Field, and Shadow Step for a Gap Closer and Widener as well as a nifty tool to trick people with. For an Elite skill, I use Dagger Storm because it goes so well with the Dark Combo Field by making the dagger steal life, as well as apply a Bleed and Slow and make yourself immune to any and all forms of crowd control, making it good both offensively and defensively. What this results in is a build that is built entirely around stealth to survive, while using backstabs and steel combos to burst targets down. Unlike most burst builds used by thieves, this one I find has more lasting power, meaning that it isn't just about using all of my cooldowns to kill one person fast. It is about using my own skill with daggers to kill someone efficiently, while having a plethora of stealths and healing in case I get in trouble, making me that much harder to kill and that much more of an asset to my team. Here you see me enter the fray with my team, trying to throw Heartseeker at a warrior, although latency causes me to use more Heartseekers than I intended. Being wary of my mistake, I fall back and switch to my short bow, playing very carefully and applying the AoE poison field, as well as trying to protect my teammate. I throw down my AoE stealth shadow refuge to help my teammate, as well as try to enter the fray and help him out. The other enemy has entered stealth, but I follow after him with Heartseeker, putting him down with the rest of my team. Backing off, I see another teammate enter the fray, and then I use my short bow bounce combo to get him dangerously low and put him out of the fight. My poison does eventually get the kill. As I was taking a point, I noticed that there was a small skirmish going on below me. Not wanting to leave the circle, I throw down an AoE poison field, poisoning an enemy thief. After the point is taken, I take my chances with the thief by bringing him down. I am unable to finish the thief off because the enemy team does turn to me and the enemy thief does teleport into his team. This leaves me no choice but to fall back to the point and make sure that they can't take it. Naturally, they follow after me. 
so in the end I tried to use my stealth to wait for backup. I stay in stealth for as long as I can before an Achar warrior pops up to help me out. I use Shadow Refuge to help ourselves out, as well as land myself a kill while I'm in stealth. Seeing more enemies join the fight, I play it safe by switching to my short bow and throwing down a poison field, reducing the healing effectiveness. I see him get very low and I down him, but he does manage to get back up with a full heal. I decide to call it even safer by backing off and throwing short bow attacks at people and backing them away from the point. Although we didn't get that many kills, the fact that we managed to take the point is a victory in itself, although one of them was stupid enough to come back for me to finish off. One thing to know about Shadow Refuge and Stealth in general is that you can revive people and finish people off while in Stealth without revealing yourself. Also, spending an increased time in Shadow Refuge extends your stealth by an incredibly long duration as shown here, allowing you to move about freely and position yourself correctly. The thing that makes a good thief an excellent thief is knowing what ability you have stolen. What makes an excellent thief a perfect thief is knowing when to use that ability. Let's take another closer look. I know I have a whirlwind stolen from a warrior, and seeing that one of those people had set down a bunch of equipment to help them out, I know to use it to counter it and put them all down, dealing incredible damage in an AoE. This makes the equipment that they have laid down completely moot, allowing me and my team to finish them off with ease. Later on in a different match, I want to get to a point as quickly as I possibly can. I do this by switching to my short bow and using the fifth ability to teleport myself across the map, making me move across it at a very much increased speed. This makes thieves very dangerous at capturing points. Let's look at this more closely. I see an enemy thief standing over the point. I throw a poison field to hurt him to the side, as well as throwing an ability I had recently stolen, although he does evade it. I then use my actual steel to deal damage to him and poison him, as well as gaining a stealth and his own stealth. I try to backstab him, although it hits him in the front. I try to score off even more hits, although he goes into stealth. He uses his heal stealth, so I decide to counter it by using the stealth I have stolen. He can't score any backstabs on me while I'm in stealth, so I see him come out and try to score a few free hits off of him. His damage is incredibly high and he actually gets me really low, although I still have my own AoE stealth to throw down to counter it. I then come out with a free backstab with my elongated stealth, and then throw off a Heart Seeker to finish him off. Although his damage, as I said, was incredibly high, I managed to counter it through my own skill and use of healing and utility. This goes to show you that it isn't all about doing burst amounts of damage, it's about being able to outwit the enemy and stay a step ahead of them.